Hello, all my geeks and geekettes out there in Motion Land, Final Cut Studio Land. This is the newest uh, Motion 4 tutorial from my channel. I want to give special props to Mark Spencer for all the wonderful, wonderful tips and knowledge. And um, I've shared several of his, of his tips and techniques with my viewers. And I uh, just want to say thank you to him. Wonderful job he's doing. And um, let's get into this. As you can see, I have three pictures or photos laid out there. As of, as of this project, they're all three the same thing. Uh, they don't have to be. They can be different photos, shapes, circles, whatever you want them to be. I'm just using this as an example, okay? So we're going to give these photos the domino effect. We're going to make them fall like dominoes, okay? And in order to do that, it's not a fairly complicated process, but it's not really intuitive either, okay? As you can see, we have the first picture, the second picture, and the third picture. If we want to rename these to make it easier, we can. I'll name this one the front. I'll name this one middle. Fairly simple naming scheme, but but intuitive enough to keep me organized. And we'll call this one back. Front, middle, and back. Okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want our work on our front uh, photo. So what I'm going to do now, I'm in perspective mode. As you can see, I've gone ahead and set this up. I'm not going to show you how to set this up. It's just a flat plane with three pictures set up vertically and I'm in perspective mode after adding a camera, okay? So I do have a camera added, and I just set my three pictures up on top of a work plane right here, and um, there's nothing much to it. Anybody who's halfway versed in Moto, because I do expect a little prior knowledge for someone to take on these tutorials, because they are not the most intuitive tutorials. And um, if you are knowledgeable enough to follow along with this tutorial, I assume you're knowledgeable enough to set up some type of scene like this to follow along. Um, if I went through and set this simple scene up for you, it would just be such a long video. So let's go to our right view by hitting the red part of our little compass down here. And this will take us to the right view, okay? If I hold shift and select all of my pictures, I can see them all, okay? I'm going to hit the F key, and that's going to frame them up. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at those three pictures from the side. So let's go up here to our view menu and select rulers and let's have our rulers show and I'm gonna set some rulers in here to mark as guides so I'm gonna go over here to the side so I see my little double sided arrow I'm gonna click and drag and that's gonna drag a guide off and I'm gonna drag a guide to the middle one the back one the front one because unless you have all three of these selected you won't be able to see all three of them so I'm gonna have these guides represent the ones that ain't visible in the canvas I'm going to click this top guide and pull one down here and line it up with the bottom. Okay, good deal. Now, we still have all three of our pictures selected, okay? As you can see, if you just select, they just show up as you select them. So that's why I have them guides in there. So now I have all three of these selected. We need to change its center point. So let's go up to our arrow, click and hold, and let's go down to the second one, which is our center point tool. And since we have all three of them selected, we can adjust all three of them at the same time. And let's pull them down to the bottom of our pictures so our pictures will rotate from this point. Our center point controls what spot of the picture it's going to rotate if you was to rotate it. If you would have the center point right here in the middle and rotated it, it would rotate right around the center here. Okay? But now that we have it down here, when I rotate it, it's going to fall like dominoes. Okay? And let me demonstrate that by grabbing the front one here. Go to my inspector, properties, under rotation. Now you can see it's rotating from the bottom there instead of in the center. Okay? So the first thing we need to do is keyframe the rotation of the first picture. So let's put our playhead at the beginning and scroll our playhead forward. It don't matter. You can guess. I'm going to say about 45 frames. Okay? I'm going to turn on my record key. I'm going to go to my X position of my front picture, and I'm going to rotate that down to about, I don't know, well, let's take it all the way down to the bottom, right there, flat, bam. Okay, so now let's turn our record key off. Now you can see we have a rotating picture here. It goes from here all the way down, okay? So now we need this second picture to interact with the first picture, okay? So we're going to do that using a link behavior, okay? 
And we want to add a link behavior to our middle picture. And we're going to add it to the same rotation value that we rotated our first picture, which was on the X value, if you remember. So I'm going to select my middle picture, go to my rotation X, right click, select link, and that's going to throw in a link parameter. Okay. Now what picture do I want to link it to? You're right. I want it to link it to the first one, the one that we've already keyframed. So I'm going to grab that front picture, and grab it and drop it into that well there. And now as you can see, if I select all of our pictures here, the first, the second one follows the first one. But we don't want the second one to fall until the first one touches it about right there. Okay? So I'm going to go scroll forward until that first picture just about touches that middle marker there like that. Okay, and let's go to our link behavior and let's, let's adjust some link behavior. Let's adjust some of our link behaviors. Um, let's go to apply link when source value below maximum. Now, if you think about this, this is what allows it to follow like it needs to follow. Okay, and that will give us our X offset and X maximum values. Let's zero out our X maximum values like that right there. Okay, so now what we want to do is I'm going to select my first picture here and I'm going to rotate this. Let's highlight them all so I can see what's going on here. And I'm going to fix that, fix it to where that first picture is right almost to that guide, okay? Now I'm going to select my link behavior and go back over here to my link parameters. Now I need to even this back up because it's falling right along and we don't want it to fall until our first picture hits it. So we need to somehow make this come back up here. And that's easy. We're going to use our X offset. So let's adjust our X offset and you can see that'll bring that picture right back up. And I'm going to make it straight. Boom, like that right there. Now our value inside of our X offset is 26.36. Let's go ahead and put the exact same value in the X maximum, only let's make it a negative. So we'll make it negative 26.36. Now watch over here. Everything is now even. Okay? So now let's select our pictures here and go forward. Boom, now that one falls right when that one hits. But as you can see, we are overlapping here. We don't want an overlap like that. So in order to fix that, let's park our playhead, go forward until our first picture is flat on the ground. Like that, right there. Now let's go back to our link behavior, okay? And we're going to adjust our scale offset, our scale to adjust this. So I'm going to hold my option key, and I'm going to drag in the scale value until that last middle picture there is even on the ground. Like that, right there, looks close enough. You might want it a little closer, but um, it's kind of hard to get it exactly accurate. 50, there's 40, let's try 1.42. 1.41 might be more. Like it. And there we go, now that's right on there, okay? So now if we select all of our pictures, you can see this one will fall, boom, it'll hit that one and these will fall. So now we just need to have the third one interact, interact, and since we've already got the link behaviors created, it's all just a matter of dragging and dropping and copying, okay? So I'm going to option drag my link behavior onto my back picture, okay? That's the exact same link behavior on that back picture, okay? So now when I scroll through, you can see it works, but it's following along the second one. We don't need it to do that. So in order to fix that, Let's go ahead and drag, let me think here, let's go ahead and drag our middle picture with our link behavior right on top of our back link behavior. Boom. Like that. And now, when we scroll through here, boom, boom, they all fall down like dominoes. Let's go back to our perspective view. Okay, we can remove our rulers now and our guides deselect everything and when I play it boom boom 
Bam. And of course, you might need to go in and adjust your scale and offset behaviors um, so they won't go below the table. But that's not hard to do. So let's go ahead and play this back. Boom. 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 And, and there it is, guys. And you can, if you can figure this out, I'm sure you can figure out how to propagate the behavior and keep it going for as many domino effects as you want. It don't have to be just three. You can do four, five, six, seven, eight, or a hundred. It's really up to you. So I hope you've learned something, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.